Oh boy. Good afternoon. And welcome back for those that were here this morning. And it looks like we have a few more to join us. Um, if you're not here this morning, my name is Wayne Hurwitz from Northrop Grumman Systems Corporation here in Southern California. And I am the industry general chair for this year's Joint Propulsion Conference. After this morning's sessions, I hope uh, you all agree that we're off to a good start. I was happy to see full sessions, papers being presented, the great keynote and uh, panel session this morning. And um, what, one of the things that made that possible was the great help from our organizing committee. I want to once again thank my JPC government co-chair, Jimmy Kenyon, from the Office of the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Research and, and Engineering. Our general chair for this year is IECEC, Ted Stern from Vanguard Space Technologies, and Ashwana Gupta from the University of Maryland, our current director for the AIAA, AIAA Propulsion and Energy Group. As I said this morning, we got a lot of help pulling together this year's program, and once again, I would like to thank all the volunteers, including the conference technical chairs, topic area organizers, and our sponsoring societies, the AIAA staff, and our industry sponsors as well, who made this all possible. So continuing our JPC theme, Design, Test, Fly, Turning Propulsion Ideas to Reality, our keynote speaker and panel this afternoon will continue today's theme of space and high-speed systems. Tomorrow again we will turn our attention to propulsion for aviation and Wednesday we'll talk public policy and our test infrastructure. In parallel sessions, uh, continuing on will be our IECEC theme, continuing to offer topics on government, academia, and industry working together towards clean energy. So there's lots of topic areas for everyone to participate in. So you don't want to hear me speak anymore, so now to introduce our keynote speaker for this afternoon, I invite to the podium our past AIAA president and the Willis Young Professor and Chair for the Department of Aerospace Engineering at the University of Maryland, Dr. Mark Lewis. Well, thank you, everyone, and, and, and welcome to what is already turning out to be a spectacularly successful Joint Propulsion Conference. Um, I know none of you are actually here to listen to me this, this afternoon, so I'm going to make my remarks as briefly as possible, and those remarks will be to introduce this afternoon's guest speaker, Mr. Elon Musk. Uh, truly an individual who requires no introduction, but please indulge me because I'm going to offer him one anyway. Um, Elon Musk, as I think you know, is the, uh, the CEO and the inspirational force behind uh, the company uh, called SpaceX, which has made quite a name for itself. Um, he has a very, very impressive background. Uh, born and raised in South Africa, he was the son of a South African engineer. His mother was from Canada. Um, at the age of 17, he decided America was the land of opportunity. So on his own, moved to uh, Canada and the United States. Uh, uh, lived with family, did a variety of, of odd jobs, including working on a wheat farm and cleaning grain bins, was accepted in 1992 to uh, University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School, and also studied physics at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, from there, he went to graduate school at Stanford, where he explains that he basically spent two days as a graduate student and decided that, no, eh, there are better things in life. Uh, went on to uh, and, and which some of us in academia would hardly agree with. Don't quote that in front of any of my graduate students. Um, went on to found a company um, called Zip2, which uh, provided online content publishing software for news organizations. Uh, sold that company, and uh, whereas I think most of us in this room would have retired, went on to found an even bigger and better company, uh, PayPal, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Um, Elon sold PayPal, and I think he decided all he ever really wanted to do was build electric cars and build space vehicles, uh, and he's managed to be able to do both. Uh, in June of 2002, he founded Space Explorations Technology, SpaceX. Uh, he's currently the CEO and the CTO, very impressive dual role. Uh, and of course, SpaceX develops and manufactures space launch vehicles. Uh, perhaps their best known products are the Falcon 1 rocket, and most recently the Falcon 9 rocket. Um, he is also uh, uh, famous for his role in leading the Tesla Motors Corporation, uh, building electric cars, and perhaps the, the first truly operational electric cars that's, I think, been an inspiration to the rest of the automotive industry. And he is also the primary investor and chairman of the board of, a, of uh, Solar City. Uh, it's a photovoltaics products and services company um, that is providing electric power services, um, um, throughout, uh, planning to do so throughout the United States. 
Um, if I went through a list of awards and recognitions, it would also, I think, fill most of the allotted time. I'll just hit some highlights. In February of 2011, Elon was listed as one of America's 20 most powerful, powerful CEOs of uh, 40 and under. Um, he was listed as one of Time Magazine's 100 people who will most affect the world in 2010. Uh, he is a recipient of our very own AAA uh, George Lowe Astronautics Award, uh, presented for the most outstanding contributions in the field of space transportation. He got that in 2007, 2008. Um, and he's on the Caltech uh, Board of Trustees. Uh, perhaps most impressive, at least in my mind, is in 2010, a survey by the Space Foundation uh, ranked Elon as the number 10th most popular space hero, tied with Dr. Werner von Braun. Uh, he's also, I think, is very well known, the inspiration for the fictional character of Tony Stark in the Iron Man 2 movie. So, without further ado, let me uh, ask you to join me in welcoming Elon Musk to the podium. Thanks very much for having me and for the kind introduction. I think we've got a video that, that's maybe a good way to kick it off, uh, is just to play the video if we could. So um, I'll maybe just give a little bit of background as to <clears throat> uh, you know um, what, why I'm doing this, and I think I think some people maybe have heard part of the story before, so I apologize if it, some of it seems uh, repetitive. But um, I, I started SpaceX uh, nine years ago, uh, almost exactly nine nine years, maybe two months ago, um, and uh, the the reason for it was um, was was I was. Uh, really concerned that we were not on a path to um, 
become a multi-planet species and a, a space-faring civilization. Um, and uh, you know, if you look at what our capability has been uh, at various points in time and you, you extrapolate that, it, it, it doesn't go in a good direction. I mean, in, in 1969, we were able to go to the moon. Um, and then in the 80s, we were just able to go to low Earth orbit with, with people. Um, and, uh, and of course, now we, we cannot even go to low Earth orbit with people. Um, although ho hopefully in, in, in a few years, uh, we'll be able to do that on, on our spacecraft and maybe, maybe other spacecraft, other American spacecraft. Um, but clearly, something needs to be done to reverse that um, trajectory. Um, or, or the future of space is extremely dismal. Um, so th that was the reason I, I started SpaceX um, with that aspiration. And, um, uh, but it was a very difficult thing because I'd never built anything physical before. I'd done a lot of software. Actually, technically, I'd built rockets when I was a kid. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, with, with, with mixed success. Uh, um, in, in, in South Africa, they, they didn't have Estes rockets, so in order to make a rocket, you have to, you have to mix your own grain and, um, and you know, get, get all these ingredients, uh, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's actually pretty hard to, to create a solid rocket propellant uh, <laughs> and get it all right. So, um, but some of them worked. Uh, but, but apart from like, stuff as a kid, that's the, the first time I made anything physical was, uh, was, was, was SpaceX. Um, and uh, so I had to kind of figure out all, all of the elements of, of what go into a rocket. Um, you know, how do you make the engines and the structure and the avionics and the guidance and control and all that. Uh, so it took a little bit of time to figure that out. Um, and then uh, w we reached orbit with uh, Falcon 1, um, basically five, you know, five and a half, or, or, yeah, I guess it would have been six years after starting the company. So that took, took a while, but since then our, our uh, momentum has increased quite a bit. And then uh, last year we um, we got what Falcon 9 to orbit, and uh, and then took Dragon to orbit and brought it back safely. Um, and then hopefully, if if uh, all goes well, this year we'll be uh, docking with the space station uh, in December. So we're uh, focused on that. That's uh, that's our current uh, top priority, um, and uh, uh, and then. Uh, our other big priority, of course, is making sure that we can satisfy uh, the Air Force NRO uh, for, for space launch. Um, and uh, in fact, after we get to space station, that will be our top priority, um, is, is really, really uh, convincing the Air Force and NRO that uh, we're, we're a good uh, vehicle 